Good day, viewers. My name is Eunice Ogunitimi. Thanks for joining another episode of Justice for You, brought to you by Edward Foundation. At Edward Foundation, we render free legal representation to indigent inmates in Nigeria. Today, I have here with me Mrs. Oluyemi Owija. You are welcome, ma'am. Thank you. Thanks for joining us again on our show. Thank you. So, Mr. Yemi Uija is a legal practitioner and also the founder of Edward Foundation. You are welcome once again. Thank you. Today, we'll be addressing the topic the legal implication of domestic violence. And domestic violence has been on a high increase, although victims, for personal reasons best known to them, refuse to report cases. So, Ma, can you tell us what you understand by domestic violence? Okay, um, basically. Domestic violence is, um, I'd say, like an hardship that people experience in their relationship. Now, this hardship can come in different forms. It can be physical, it can be psychological, it can be economical, it can even be financial, it can be emotional, it can be anyhow, right? So, when it is domestic, sometimes, most of the time, domestic is related to um, personal relationship at the home front. Maybe it is coming from the wife or it is coming from the, um, from the husband. Or sometimes the children also experience domestic violence from their parents. So that's what term, um, child labor, you know, stuff like that. So domestic violence is in various uh, form and it can be meted out by um, people that are very intimate to us, our partners most of the time. Right, you also mentioned husband. I want to know because I don't think there are really cases on where a husband has been, maybe has come, he has reported it. Is it possible for domestic violence to be committed against a man? Definitely. Definitely. But you know, men are naturally egoistic, so maybe they would not report. But I tell you that there are some homes that the wives are like, <laughs> they are like gods of their husbands. And that way, the, the husband is probably, sometimes it's even verbal. The fact that we women, we have sharp mouths and we can run our mouths and say a lot of things. So men can be verbally abused, but they would never come out or they would not come out. Let me not say never, because they're expecting that people will start coming out, right? So let me not say never. But men will naturally know, don't want to come out because they feel, okay, if I say my wife is verbally abusing me, my fellow men will look at me and am I a weak man? You know, stuff like that. So that's, those are the things that restrain men from um, reporting and coming out to say this is what I'm going through. Sometimes it's verbal, other times it's emotional, sometimes, but really physical, because men are naturally stronger. <laughs> <laughs> but I've heard that there are some women that are also physically abused, that they can you know, beat up any man. <laughs> so, so yeah, men can be victims of domestic violence. Right, so what are the effects of domestic violence on the victim? Hmm. Well, you see, this, this, most of the time it's emotional. It's very emotional, especially when it is from a woman. You know, um, you have a husband, you're going home, or you have a wife, you come to work, and you have a happy environment to work. I remember you're going home to torture, you're going home to, 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 to violence, you know. The fear, you don't want to be, you don't want to go back. Some people become suicidal. You know, some people are psychologically down. Some people are, I mean, emotionally down that they can't function anywhere. So, lots of um, of effect on, on this, you know. But basically, emotional. And you know, one thing about emotional abuse, or sorry, emotional effect of domestic uh, violence is that, you know, if I have a court here, you can look at me and say, but what's wrong with you? Sorry, something is wrong with you. Or I tell you I have a headache. You can easily tell me, yeah, sorry, take my son. But when someone is going through psychological pain or emotional pain, they can't express it. They can't explain it. Nobody can see. You can't see it from the physical. So it takes somebody that is very close to the person to know that there is a change in this person's attitude and then to call for help. So most of the time, even the victim themselves do not know that they are going through something. You know, so it is hard to say I want to go see a doctor for you. They will not until now deteriorate. I now see people jumping down to uh, Tommy language and say they want to commit suicide. So people hang themselves. These things can relate to that. You know, so those are 
the um, effect. So the landlord make provisions for domestic violence, and are they adequate enough? Well, I always say something in Nigeria. There's nothing that Nigeria does not have law. The, I don't. I've not seen that thing. Even tech, tech that is new now, yeah. that we've had laws. We now cyber crime laws and all that. So Nigeria have lot of laws, and domestic violence is one of the crime that we have law that are against, you know. So we have the law, but the problem is execution. So there are laws against domestic violence. Domestic violence is basically for physical violence, it is assault. So if you, if you read um, um, criminal code from section 357 down, it talks about assault, talks about rape, talks about all these things, because somebody can rape you as part of domestic violence, falls under gender-based violence and all that. So, all these things are, we have law for it. Even with the new BAP Act, um, that is no longer new now, it's about five years, um, 2015 law. So um, that law also in section, um, section 15 talks about domestic violence and prescribes that when somebody um, has assaulted his wife or, or partner, the person is like three years in, in prison. So we have laws. Now the major challenge to that law is the best authority or agency in Nigeria that should execute law is the police. Until recently, most times when you report cases of domestic violence to Nigerian police, they tell you it's a family affair. Go back home. It's your husband. Go and beg him. Those are, those are the kind of things you hear. But now, in Lagos State, at least I'm sure of Lagos and Ikiti State, when you go to police station and make this complaint, they now know that it is no longer a family affair. It is a crime. So they take it as such. But as, even at that, we still need lots of training to be done to our police so that when women come forth and make these um, complaints, right, and say, my husband beats me, my husband does this, my wife does this, they should take it like it's a crime, like armed robbery. You get what I mean? Because somebody that is terrorizing me, that is making me not to express myself, that is making me get scared that I can do things. I hear his own or car like this and I'm, and I'm running and I'm trying to put things in order. I mean, that's not freedom. So it's more or less like the person is a terrorist on you, on your, on your personality, on, your, on who you are. You can no longer express and be yourself. So that which let our police know that it is a crime and perpetrators should be um, disciplined and, and um, dealt with accordingly. So, so aside from the police, are there other authorities to report such cases? To? Definitely. Um, in Lagos State, if you are a, if you are a victim of domestic violence, you have lots of places to report to. One, you can go to the nearest police station. Secondly, every local government in Lagos has a human rights sec sec um, department. Or se sector, something like that. You can always work there and make report. Then we have the Ministry of Human Affairs. It's at Alausa in Kesha. You can always go there and also report. Then we have the Domestic Violence um, re um, Response yes. Unit, yes. Re Response Team Unit, at Alausa as well. They are, they are even very, very prominent online. So if you're on Twitter, if you're on Instagram, they are already there. Slide into their DMs, send messages, and they will definitely call you, invite you and your partner, and see how they can be of help. So, you know, there, there, there are some other private NGOs that you can also report to. I know of um, Gender Mobile, and you can call with Gender Mobile or Even you, somebody can call on your behalf if you are that scared to make the call, you know. They are there to respond to you. And um, there is um, um, Project Alert. Project Alert also. They do, you know, they take these things off. So if you are a victim, it is enough that you are a victim. Don't compound your situation by being silent. Talk about it. Report to people that can render help to you. Some organizations will even go as far as giving you, giving you, uh, what do they call it, accommodation. If, 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 if that is the, the problem, if that's why you don't want to leave this man that is terrorizing you, if, if you have problems like, okay, how am I going to sort myself? Where am I? Some organizations go as far as helping victims with accommodation, giving them financial help, try helping them to stabilize. And of course, at Edward Foundation, we also collaborate with some of these organizations and they refer victims to us and we ensure that they get justice. 
by you know prosecuting the um, the perpetrators. So we make sure we make the appropriate report and follow up on their cases. So, so what do you think uh, victims should do when they are domestically abused? And do you think making a report is sufficient enough? Yes, it's one thing to, to report. It's another thing to be ready to face trial all the way. Now, I understand that domestic violence is a very personal issue. It's personal and it is, it's emo you know, it's emotionally um, overwhelming. So, you're looking at somebody that you have children for and you are reporting that person, and they are telling you they take it to prison, probably. And you are like, ha, ah, you have doubts. What would people say? I send my husband to prison. What would people say? You know, so I have, I have to be very realistic about this. It's, it's not easy. And the, the challenges we have faced as an organization is when we make this report on behalf of victims, they always find it hard to follow up. They, want, they don't want to follow up because they don't want to be responsible for the incarceration of their partner. They don't want to tell their children at home that their daddy is in prison because I made a report against them. You know? So those are the reservations that is um, in it. But one thing that some of these organizations do is that, I, I, at least I know for women affairs, before women affairs go up to the point of saying we want to prosecute this matter, they try to counsel you. They, try to, they will take you to anger management classes they take you to um, to do psycho and uh, what do they call it? Uh, yeah, mental health uh, tests to sh know that maybe you are in your right senses because they believe that for you to carry an adult that has given you that you once told you love and that have children for you and you who are living together for five years, ten years, there are some people like fifteen years. Then you now carry that woman and start to batter and beat her. Maybe something is wrong with your brain. So they take you for tests and find out that. You are all right. So if you are mentally okay, they now feel okay. If you are mentally okay, maybe it's an anger issue. Then they take you for, a, for anger management and give you room for improvement. So they don't give up on you immediately. But if it continues, of course, they want you over to the appropriate authority for prosecution. So I know that if, if you're scared of, I don't want my husband to go to jail, I don't want my wife to go to jail, that is not what I want. At the end of the day, you have the power to do anything as a victim. Victims are so powerful, but we don't know, and they don't even know, right? A victim can decide not to come to court and give evidence. Even when you're someone, you can come and come and give evidence that we know cannot nail the person. You can, you know, so, but at the same time, you can ensure that the person gets to where you want them to get to and give the appropriate evidence, right? So the choice is yours. Don't just report and think that is the end to it. You have more work to do after reporting. You have to follow up. You have to make yourself available for investigation, for you know, for taking evidence and then even a, a, a trial in court. You have to be very, very available. If you are not, this man will go back and do worse. You know? So and if you think that I, I'm telling you, if these organizations feel when they listen to the both sides, they feel that these things can be resolved and there's something wrong somewhere, they try to cancel, they try to ensure because it's a family, you know, the, people are involved, people's emotions are involved. So they try for amicable settlement first before they, you know, they'll go overboard. Yeah. That will be all for today. Thanks so much for watching. We've heard a lot from our speakers concerning the topic. Domestic violence has been a menace in our society and necessary for us to emphasize it and also to address it. Also, don't forget to stay tuned. We'll continue on this episode next week. Don't forget also to like, to like, share, and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.